All right, so what I'd like to do in this video is show you two things. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is show you how to turn on your diagnostics on your calculator. Um, in order to do any kind of linear regression analysis, you need the diagnostic feature turned on. Uh, secondly, I'd like to do is, um, I got this example up here that's on Blackboard. Uh, I'd like to do part A only and show you how to create a scatter diagram so that you can determine if your data set that you're looking at um, has a linear relationship or not. Uh, the rest of the problem will work out in another video because this will take a little bit of time. So the first thing I'd like to do is turn on the diagnostic feature on the calculator. Now what that does is it activates all of the linear regression um, features of the calculator. Now the, di the diagnostic feature is located in the catalog. So the catalog, it's over here down at the bottom near the key zero. You can see it says catalog right there. If you have a TI-83, I believe it's in yellow. So to get to the catalog, you have to hit the second function. So you hit second and then the zero key. And then you're on the catalog. Now, I, I need to go to the diagnostic feature. As you can see, it's in alphabetical order. These are the A's. If, so if you want to go to the diagnostic feature, you want to go down to D. So what you could do is see this little A right here. That means it's alphanumeric. So what you could do is you see the letter D right there. You could just click the letter D, or you could just hold the down arrow until you get to the D's, whatever you want. So I'm going to uh, hit the D, and it jumps to the D. And I'm still not there. So i got to find the diagnostic feature. So if I hold the down arrow for a little bit, oh, there it is. This is how you turn your diagnostics on and off. So you find this diagnostic on uh, feature, you put the cursor right next to it, and then you just hit the enter key. So what it does is it brings it back to the home screen and notice it's blinking because it's waiting for you to tell it or give it to command and say, turn it on. So you just have to hit enter one more time. And then it says done. Now, if you do this once, you'll never have to do this again. Um, even after you turn your calculator on uh, and turn it off again, it'll still remember um, that the diagnostics are on, so you will not have to do this. All right, so the first thing you want to do in, um, you know, when you want to create a scatter diagram is you want to get the data in the calculator. Now, um, as you can see, this uh, example here, which is in Blackboard, um, is a, a marketing example. And you know, this guy that's he's trying to determine if um, uh, sales are affected by advertising dollars. You know, in theory, I guess, the more money you spend on advertising, um, in theory, the more sales you should have, right? So uh, I would expect this relationship to be positive, right? In other words, as you spend more money, you get more sales. That's what one would think, right? All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to put this data in the calculator. So advertising dollars are going to be our um, independent variable. Those are going to be our X's. And then our dependent variable, those are going to be the sales values. Those will be the Y's. So you can see I have this separated into, into two columns here just to save space. All right, so the first thing I got to do is get this data in. Now I've already typed it in, but let's just run through the motions on how to do that. So to put data in a calculator, you push the stat button, which is up here in the middle on, on the top of the calculator. And then you choose option one for edit. So you choose option one. And now notice in list number one, I already typed in the advertising dollar amounts, right? And then in L2, I put the sales. And I believe I've given these values a quick look and they look pretty good to me. So uh, I feel pretty confident I didn't make any typos there. All right, so the data's in. All right, so now what? Well, now I'd like to do uh, to use letter A here. Now notice I told you what to use for X and Y in this question. And, and to be honest with you, most questions do that. It says X represents advertising dollars in thousands. Y represents sales for the company in thousands. All right, so part A says use your calculator to make a scatter plot that shows how advertising dollars explain sales does there appear to be a linear relationship? All right, so as it turns out, your calculator's got some pre-defined uh, graphs. And all you gotta do is tell the calculator, um, hey, I want you to use this kind of a graph, um, go to the calculator and grab these lists of data to, to use in my graph and go ahead and make the graph for me. And there's a couple of nice little features set up in the calculator to quickly get uh, a picture. All right, so where you set up this menu is right in the top left-hand corner. It says right above this Y equals key, it says stat plot. It's called the statistical plotting menu. So if you go second and then y equals, it brings you to your statistical plotting menu. Now notice mine are all turned off. You know, some of yours may be on. Uh, and if you notice a bunch of them are on, then just choose the, the option four, which is plots off, and it'll turn them off. You could graph a lot of data at the same time in this calculator. This calculator is actually, believe it or not, pretty powerful. So what I'm going to do is I want to set up um, the first option here, which is the first plot. So I'm going to choose option one, or plot one. 
So first thing I want to do is I want to turn that data on. So I'm going to say turn on. So I'm going to use hit the enter key. Now you see type of graph. Well, there's a lot of different types of graphs and you've studied them already actually. Uh, the histogram, the box and whisker plot. These are some graphs that you've actually already seen. But actually the first one we need is the very first one that's highlighted. And those, this first one with the little dots that are scattered around, well that's the scatter diagram. And then it asks you, okay, if you want to use a scatter diagram, you know, where's your X data and where's your Y data? All right, well, I happen to put my data in list one and list two, L1, L2. And then, of course, you see the mark here. There's three different options for marks. They have these little box, little plus signs, and little dots. I just use the boxes. I leave it alone. Uh, but if you want to change it, you can do so. All right, so once this menu is set up, in other words, the date is turned on, you select the scatter diagram icon, you tell the calculator where your uh, data is, L1 and L2, and you pick the mark you want. You essentially have to tell the calculator, hey, go ahead and do this, um, but make the data fit in this window. Now, the window is not very big, obviously, and, you know, this data, as you can see um, down here, um, you know, some of it's, you know, in the hundreds, right? You know, I know this is in thousands of uh, dollars, but like these values here, 100, 110, 112, dot, 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 you know, I need to make them fit. Now, to, to do that, what your calculator has is a couple of predefined windows already set up, and this is in what we call the zoom menu. So this key right in the middle at the top is called zoom. So if you press that key, there's a zoom feature set up specifically for statistics. I believe it's zoom 9 or 10. Let's just go to the bottom here and find it. There it is. It's zoom number 9, which is called zoom stat. So what that zoom stat feature does is it's telling the calculator, listen, I got some data in here, you know, statistical data. Go to the, to the lists, find the data, and, you know, figure out the lowest and highest values to make it fit inside of this window. So the calculator will take care of that for you in, in one quick step. So I'm going to use zoom 9. So now since I'm on 9 and it's highlighted, I could just press enter, or I could, of course, just press number 9 for future use. So I'm just going to push the number 9 and let it do its thing. All right, so there's your scatter plot. So notice um, the data uh, it doesn't quite have a football shape like I described to you in our notes. Um, and that's just because this is, I mean, let's be honest here, how many pieces? This is only 12 pieces of data, right? So there's 12 data points on the scatter diagram. You know, in the real world, a scenario would have hundreds and hundreds of pieces of data. And I showed you a couple of those in the notes. You know, when there's hundreds of pieces of data, the data tends to cluster and make like a football effect. And, you know, it, and you can see clearly the trend of the data is kind of a linear fashion. As a matter of fact, this dot here, that dot, these dots, they're all kind of really in a straight line. So this, I'm going to be able to draw a line straight through this data that's going to capture that. And in, another, you know, in the next video, I'll show you how to actually crunch the regression equation and get that line, you know, y equals mx plus b. And then we'll show you how to graph that line through this data. But, you know, as far as it says, use your calculator to make a scatter plot that shows how advertising dollars explain sales. Okay, so here it is. Uh, does there appear to be a linear relationship? And I would say, yeah, this linear relationship uh, looks pretty good. Um, what's the strength of that bond? You know, in other words, what is the R value, the, the correlation coefficient? Well, we have to calculate that still, but I, I can see it looks pretty good. Um, I can tell the relationship is positive which is what I kind of expected. As we spend more money this way on this axis, more money on advertising dollars, you would expect more sales, right? And that's the idea of the positive trend of this data set. Notice the data doesn't have any kind of curve to it. Um, it's kind of linear. The data is not just scattered all over the place. Um, so I would say this probably has a pretty strong positive linear correlation. And that's you know what, what I would answer for um, you know this second part, the letter A. All right, so check out our next video on how to um, you know, calculate the correlation coefficient and the regression equation. Thanks for watching.